Hello, and thank you for joining me today on this exciting episode. We're, we're going to be taking a ride on the internet to see what Alton Towers is all about. Okay, I looked it up. You know, I typed into Google, best theme park in the UK. That's what we got. So I just want to see what it's all about. You know, see if there's any differences. All right, let's go. Oh, and this is, you know, this is Coaster Studios. Go check them out. Yeah. Alton Towers is arguably the best theme park in the United Kingdom. It's a castle. Kingdom. And I had heard so much about. That's crazy. Is that an actual, like, castle? This place before I had the opportunity to visit. And so I was very excited when I knew that I was going to be coming here. And so right out of the bat for my first time, I said, I want to do two days here. I really want to spend some time to enjoy this park, see all they have. That was kind of bothering me how this frog do two days. It here. looks like it's supposed to spit it in his mouth, but it's I really he's missing. <laughs> Maybe it's not supposed to do that. That would be kind of weird, but really want to spend some still. It's like he's dousing him. He's barely missing. This frog is clearly trying to catch the water time to enjoy this park, see all they have to offer. And I have no regrets. Guys, Alton Towers is freaking awesome. This is going to be my full in-depth review. I'm going to talk Freaking about awesome. all you need to know if you're Let's planning go. a trip here. Things that I liked, things that I didn't like. Oh, that's like. pretty cool. I will not be going to... The coaster is like right next to the entrance, swooping down. You know, everybody's like, ha <laughs> ha, ha look at us, we're already on a ride. Too in-depth with any of the roller coasters because I will have separate reviews for them. I already have several out already. Oh, this place this is nuts. Let's get into it. Alton Towers, everyone. So... First I want to talk about is the location of this place. It is in the middle of nowhere. And when I say nowhere, I mean it is not near a major city. In order to get to Alton Towers, you almost have to go through back roads and through a small village to get to the park entrance. There's no way around it. You're going through this small town, huh. winding around these roads, and you're like, I guess there's a theme park around here somewhere. And because they can't build any of their rides above the tree line, you cannot see anything and until you they can't go above the tree line they need to plant a tall ass tree then you know like if they want a big coaster they're gonna have to plant a huge tree they're gonna they probably got pretty creative considering you know they have all these crazy coasters but they can't go higher than the tree line you're already there it is so crazy and a lot of it just goes back to the history of this place how it got to be what it is today but because it's in the middle of nowhere they have so <laughs> much land so much so that i was incredibly surprised when i walked in here that i it looks like paradise was through the front entrance and i still couldn't see any rides to get from one side of the park to the other by walking will take you a minimum of 15 minutes that's crazy and what's even crazier than that is you probably won't pass any any other rides to get there in the it looks like we're in some kind of historic park the middle of this park is the gardens it is this massive area that goes way the heck down there everything is terraced there aren't any rides anywhere close to that they aren't even allowed to build down there and that's what I mean when I'm talking about the history of this place. Because that centerpiece, the towers that Alton Towers is named after, that's a real-life castle. They aren't allowed to <laughs> touch that. And so as a result... See, I'm not the only one who asked, is that a real castle? <laughs> it is a real-life castle in the middle. That's so cool. This place has a very cool and different vibe to it than any theme park I've been to here in the States. So none of the rides are anywhere near that. The only exception is Hex, which makes you think you're in the castle, but they're smart. They had the entrance be at the castle, but the actual ride is in a separate building. Very clever ah. on their part. But going back to the gardens, they do have a sky ride so that you can... Hold on, hold on. Someone's like at my door. What the heck? Uh, it was my nemesis, Tyler. All right, we're back. Avoid that. However, when we went, the sky ride was down, which meant going from, let's say, X Sector to Forbidden Valley. It's going to be a pretty big walk. So if you visit here, there's a good chance you'll see the gardens. Where's it's all the rides? another thing to actually go down into them. I did not even touch that because I knew if I went down there, I would probably get lost and I wouldn't be able to find my way back. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. So after you've... I'm just amazed by the lack of any branding. Usually amusement parks are so obnoxious with the amount of signs and lights and blah, blah, blah. Go here. Blah, 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 blah. Trying to sell you stuff like merchandise and food and... This place is just a beautiful, like, historic park with a castle. 
Very different, interesting, cool vibe. Parked your car. You're going to board a monorail. It is impossible to walk from the parking lot to the front entrance. You have to take this monorail. And that right there, to me, is what really makes this feel like a resort. Because they kind of make it feel exclusive. It's, so it's almost like Harry Potter. Like you have to get on the train to get to Hogwarts. So far away that you can't even get there by walking. You know, it makes it feel remote. So you get on this monorail and it takes you through the park. You're passing over Nemesis, you see Galactica. What kind of coaster is this? And then you get to your front end. Hold up, it falls off a cliff right here then stops. <laughs> entrance, Tower Street. That's Don't that go on that coaster. That's entrance where you have the old double corkscrew right in front of it. So cool. Honestly, one of my favorite park entrances. Before I get in depth into some of the areas, let's talk about park hours. This park drove me crazy with the hours they operated. Holy crap, why do they close at 4 o'clock most days? That is insane. Pro wait, 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 okay. Um, them closing at 4 o'clock is, that's crazy. That's crazy. But you can rent your own pirate ship. This is next level. Probably the earliest closing I've ever seen with a major theme park. If the park is busy, they will extend it to five o'clock, but still I'm like, holy cow. It makes it so hard to spend a lot of time here because you know your hours. What time do you have to get there? Like what time do they open, 5 a.m.? are limited and with a place so big you really have to go 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 to get stuff done that's why we planned these coasters are cool we saw how short the hours of operation were and said if we want to be able to do anything we're going to need two days Whoa. but then you encounter the other problem which is staggered openings you have some rides that open for early entry you have, like wicker yeah, wooden so let's coasters say that opens too. at 9 30. other rides are not going to open until 11. so from 11 until four o'clock that means you have five hours to ride certain attractions it's a very narrow window of time. It really just means that when you go to Alton Towers, especially for the first time, you have to have a game plan. You have to know what to do, especially because you're not going to go do Nemesis and then say, hey, let's go ride, let's say, Oblivion. They're so Whoa. far away from each other that that logically would make no sense. Oh, my gosh. Look at this coaster going through. Like, it's not even about how fast or how steep or how tall. It's going through a paradise of like waterfalls jungle this is really cool that is a really cool and you're hanging upside down looking at it it's like you're a bird flying through the jungle when you come to alton towers you have to know what you're gonna do so we hit wicker man first thing and then headed over to x sector to hit oblivion by then smiler already had a pretty long wait and so we said, okay, we'll do that right before the, smiler. before the park closes. So then we went over, did Rita 13, and then made our way over to Forbidden Valley. And when I talk about that, obviously my main focus is the roller coasters. If you are you're literally backwards, looking oh to my do gosh. a lot of the other this attractions, then you have to work that in too. Like they have Duel, which is the shooting dark ride. It actually used to be a regular dark ride, but then they converted it. And so it's got this castle theme and it's okay. I'd say it's worth doing at some point. I mentioned Hex earlier. That's a Vacoma. I mean, if it closes at 4 p.m., you got to be picky. Madhouse and probably the best of its kind. Really cool with this iconic story. There's a few others, like you have the Blade, which is your Viking ship. But I felt like that was something that the park There's a could reason why no one's on that. On, especially when Thor... You've only got five hours this park is open. You got to... No, cut out the, po the pirate ship, okay? We'll do that at the state fair park has so many thrilling flat rides so i want to discuss the theme of it you've heard me mention some of the specific areas and i will say some areas are done better than others a lot of these are just a general theme so don't go in expecting a theme like what you might get at a place like europa park or even port of ventura or fantasia land x sector does not have a ton of theming i would say the rides are more <laughs> themed than the area which is completely opposite from some other parks they might go with focusing on theming the area, but not- I've never seen a coaster this wide. As much the coaster specifically. So don't go in expecting a lot it's of like theming- like the trains are sideways. These ...designated areas. Like Mutiny Bay, you'll see some pirate flags here and there. You do have Sabibi's Land, which is their kids area, and that's actually pretty well done. <laughs> it would be nice if this park had another kids area. Instead, you just have this one concentrated section where all of your kids' rides are just right there. So I can imagine if you're a family with kids of multiple ages, you might be split up throughout the day 
simply because if you have a kid who's just wanting to stay in some BB's land the whole time, and then your teenagers are wanting to go off and do roller coasters, they might not even step foot into some BB's land. Of course, I didn't have that issue, but I can imagine how okay. other people might. Going back to the theming though, I think some roller coasters are definitely done better than others. Rides like Spinball Wizard aren't themed at all. Wicker Man and Nemesis obviously are really well themed. And then you have a ride like Rita that has pretty much nothing. So it's- I can't be spinning in a circle while going on a, on a roller coaster. It's one or the other. Spinning in a circle by itself, I'm already gonna throw up. But while on a coaster? Do you guys not get dizzy over there on that side of the pond? is not very consistent like some other parks where it's either all or nothing when it comes to theming. So I think it kind of goes back to consistency. The park is kind of spotty with certain areas that they focus their attention onto. I don't think it's per- Look at that though. Personally that big of a deal for me. I don't know, the theming looks kind of, I don't know if it's the theming or just, there's a lot of really, really cool decorations and I don't know. It didn't really bother me, but you can see how certain areas are getting more attention than others. One of my mm. favorite things I got to do while I was at Alton Towers is eat at the roller coaster restaurant. That huh. is located right next to Galactica, and this is great if you've eaten at Food Loop at Europa Park. This is basically the same thing. I absolutely love this. It's a great social place to go to with some friends. The food is delicious, and one thing I liked about it is that it's actually open. No way. No way. Is that the food? After the park closes. <laughs> no way. So if it's a five o'clock close, you can say, hey, let's- how much, how much does this cost? This has got to be expensive. Your food goes on a coaster to get to you. Let's go eat at the roller coaster restaurant right now. So that almost makes it a bit easier to plan for your day because then you can say, let's go get dinner afterwards. As for the food and some- I would just want to- <laughs> I might have more fun watching my food on a roller coaster than going on a roller coaster. Some other areas, I thought some places were done better than others. There was not a huge variety. I would say the biggest variety of food options that I saw was at the roller coaster restaurant. But if you're looking for your classic park food, this park definitely has it. So to just wrap up this review, if you're going to Alton Towers for the first time, don't be surprised if you get lost. The park is humongous. There's so many hidden paths. I couldn't even find Runaway Mine Train the first day I was at the park. And again, I have to reiterate this. If you're going for the first time, to Two days. Look at the amount of loops. They're just, they're just looping into each other. You got some crazy architects. See, this is what I mean. They had to get creative because you're not allowed to go above the tree line. So <laughs> they packed the thrill below the tr below the tree line is probably the way to go. Both days I was there, it was pretty busy. Maybe if you don't go in a peak season time, you could get away with just one day. But if you have to wait in some lines, yeah, you'll want a second day. The other thing that I, this is just one of my regrets. I wish that I stayed on site at the Alton Towers Hotel. I feel like that really would have made the experience even better. Again, it just would have added to that whole resort feel that Alton Towers has. Alton Towers is probably one of the most unique parks in the world, period. It has the history, it has the charm, it is beautiful, and it has spectacular roller coasters. The park just gets so creative because they know they can't build super tall, so they build underground or they come up with layouts that don't require something so tall. I can't wait for the day that I get to go back here. This was one of those- Someone needs to plant a really tall tree. Those parks that I visited in Europe that I was like, man, I don't want to leave. This place is awesome. So I would definitely recommend this park, probably more than a lot of the parks I went to in Europe. This was definitely one of my favorites. In some ways, I liked this place more than Europa Park. Definitely not for the theming, although it is cool that Alton Towers has a lot of those dark themes. So if you're a fan of roller coasters and theme parks, definitely plan on visiting Alton Towers someday. It is not perfect, but they are not so big and distracting to me that it ruined the rest of the experience. There are way more positives about this place than negatives. But I want to hear from you guys. If you've been Alton Towers- cool. Wait, what is that? Some kind of creature with intestines on the outside? what you think of it if you agree with my thoughts some scary stuff in here <laughs> some pretty gory let me know all that down in the comments below and of course stay tuned for more park reviews i've still got more coming here at coaster studios thank you for watching and i'll see you <laughs> next time wow that's incredible
Uh, okay. You can, in fact, walk from the parking lot to the park entrance. There you go. It's not Harry Potter after all. Um, that was insane. Like, totally different vibe of any any theme park here in the United States. I've never seen roller coasters going through the forest over a waterfall with a legit castle. Somehow it's like very mod. It's very not modern. It's very like uh, mature. Like some, some people might go just to go to the castle. Probably not. Um, but it looks incredible. That is definitely next level in a lot of ways. Um, and it, that restriction to having to build beneath the tree line, it's pretty strange, but I can, you know, a lot of times when you put a restriction on yourself and what you can do, it opens up the creativity. You start thinking, okay, well, what can we do? If we can't go above the trees, then we're going to go beneath the roots. <laughs> um, anyway, that was very cool. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope to see you here, uh, tomorrow. Okay, good. I'll be here. Subscribe if you want to. Either way, thank you and goodbye.